Hi everyone, welcome to week eight of our Green Workplace video series. Today is going to be a little bit different from what we usually do here. So we are still on the topic of sustainable yards, but we are going to be focusing on rain barrels today in the form of an interview. So I've invited two of our amazing coworkers here at Green Calgary who have become rain barrel experts over the years that they've worked with us. <laughs> So we have Lex, who is our manager of employees and communications, and we also have Jen, who is our Green Hub team member. So through this interview, we are going to be addressing some of the most frequently asked questions about our rain barrels to help you better understand why they're important to us, to our yards, but also the environment. So on that note, let's get started here. I was hoping that our guest speakers could just tell us a little bit about themselves. So Jen, how about you give us a little self-introduction and tell us what you do at Green Calgary? Hi, I'm Jen. Um, I've been with Green Calgary for about 20 years. So long time I started as a volunteer and uh, it was mostly Green Calgary was based on uh, just local concerns. And over the years we've grown into a real educational charitable organization. Um, so for many years, I worked the eco store and that was about educating composting and rain barrel use. And so the rain barrels, we've been in partnership with the same uh, suppliers for over 20 years. And so I'm very familiar with the rain barrels. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. How about you, Lex? Well, a little less familiar with the rain barrels, but I've been with Green Calgary for about uh, four years now. And um, I work with the all of our communications, so uh, I'm the one who does the social media, our blogs, all that sort of thing. And then I also do some uh, some managing around the office. Um, yeah, and uh, basically uh, through the um, through our rain barrel sales every year, uh, I've learned quite a bit of uh, secondhand rain barrel knowledge, um, which has slowly. Uh, moved into first-hand frame barrel knowledge. So that's where I am. Awesome. And yeah, both of you are uh, a big part of our rain barrel sales every year. So you two are the ones that are actively planning it and making it happen. So thank you for that. <laughs> so I just wanted to start with our questions. So first, Jen, this is to you. This question is to you. First of all, what are rain barrels used for and where do our rain barrels come from? All right. Well, our rain barrels are used to collect rainwater and um, the plants love rainwater better than they love water from your hose. There's no chlorine in ra rainwater and it's the temperature. So you're not shocking your plants because it does have your ambient temperature from being out in your yard. So that would be what you would use a rain barrel for. <clears throat> and the story of our rain barrels is long ago when Green Calgary had a waste it not shop, um, we connected up with a local family that had these rain barrels. And uh, Dirk was working in the food industry. And so he realized that all these food grade uh, 45 gallon plastic barrels were being disposed of into the landfills because companies have to pay to have them recycled. So this often doesn't happen. So it's just easier for them to get rid of them. So he made contracts with people to intercept these barrels and he invested in the um, very specialized equipment that it takes to put fittings on these rain barrels. And so he started, you know, triple washing them and setting them up. And over the years, we've had many different designs of rain barrels. And uh, so the whole um, feel good feeling about these barrels is it keeps them from going in our landfills, supports a local family, and it helps you conserve water and catch water. Yeah, awesome, perfect. All right, our next question is to Lex. So how are rain barrels beneficial to the environment on top of what Jen has already told us? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So of course, since they are reused barrels, it does keep them out of the waste stream. Um, you know, uh, Dirk has told me that when, when he started, they there was no option to recycle them at all. So they went directly to the landfill, whereas now, you know, there is the option to recycle them. But as Jen said, uh, that, that doesn't always happen. So this is definitely a better life for them. Um, then, of course, they, they save water. So uh, that saves you money. Um, but 
also it reduces the amount of storm water that gets into the storm drains. Um, and that's actually really important because it reduces the load on our water treatment plants. So if you think of how much water goes through the water treatment plants, um, you know, that takes a huge amount of energy effort. Uh, a lot of our tax dollars go into treating all of our water and they can't pick and choose which water gets treated. So when it rains, that water goes into the river, it gets treated. Um, so you're keeping all of the water that would run off. And, you know, as it runs off, it also collects things like oil from the roads, um, pesticides that were sprayed on grass, that sort of stuff. And that all goes into our, our water streams. So you're preventing all of that from happening, happening and you get to keep the water and use it on your own, own plants. So Awesome. Yeah, I think that's a really good point and maybe not what people would know when they're first buying a rain barrel. So those are all very good points. Thank you. All right, Jen, next question is for you. So there are different types of rain barrels out there, but Green Calgary currently sells barrels with three outlets. Can you explain to us why this is a benefit over single or double outlet barrels? Yes, we used to sell both the uh, single outlet barrel and the triple outlet barrel. The single outlet barrel runs with a diverter kit, which is quite complicated for most people. And the diverter kit is a, a piece that you cut and fit into your downspout. And then there's a tubing that comes off that downspout into the single outlet barrel. The single outlet barrel is closed in completely. And this tube that comes from your diverter kit fits very snugly into an opening in the top. And you have to have that tight fit and that covered in barrel for it to create a back pressure because that's how a diverter kit works. Once the barrel is full, it creates a back pressure and the back pressure will go up this line. So that doesn't allow any more water into the rain barrel. Your excess water will go down the downspout and away from your house. And as I said, that is complicated because there's different sizes of downspouts. There's rectangular, there's square, and it became an issue for us. So over the years, we have modified, modified, and the design that works the absolute best for anyone is the triple outlet barrel. So this barrel has a four inch opening in the top of it that's covered with a screen. And you just simply cut your downspout at the right height and put your rain barrel directly under the downspout. So the other, why it's called the three outlet barrel is you've got the opening at the top, but on each side of the rain barrel up towards the top is an outlet and this is so that you can connect up two barrels or three or as many as you want, but it's a good starter barrel because you just do need the one. And from one of those outlets at the top, you can run a, a hose kit and the hose kit's 20 to 24 feet long. And that way you can just direct any overflow water away from your house to a tree bed, garden bed, that kind of thing. So you've got how to disperse your overflow and then you just got your standard uh, three quarter inch brass tap at the bottom for putting your watering can under and collecting your rainwater. So that's the model that we we currently sell and it's much simpler to install and and that's why we've gone with it. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of extra benefits with that one for sure. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for that. Lex, next question is for you. Um, so if I were to purchase a rain barrel today, and I had no idea how to install it. How do I install it? Does Green Calgary have tools that could help me with this? Yeah, absolutely. And as Jen said, it's actually way easier than it looks. Um, I know that when I first heard about it, I said, oh, well, it's a little daunting. Uh, but we actually have, uh, in we have instructions on our website. Um, we have them in multiple languages as well, if, uh, if that's a barrier for people. Um, and then we also have a video and actually just watching the video is a huge help. Um, it shows you exactly how to set everything up, where to cut things. Um, there's even a few little like bonus tips hidden in the video. Like, um, you know, when you're cutting your downspout, putting a piece of cardboard behind it so that you don't accidentally cut your house. Um, that's <laughs> a, a nice little uh, bonus. Um, yeah, so if you just go to greencalgary.org, we have all of that information there. And if you still need help, we're always here to help. Uh, and you can email us and our, our email address is also at greencalgary.org. Awesome. Sounds like lots of tools. Thank you. All right. Next question is for Jen. How do you clean your rain barrel properly? Okay. <clears throat> to clean your rain barrel, um, 
because the rain barrel stands in the sunlight, you're going to have that UV light, which can cause an algae to build in the, the standing water in your rain barrel. Now, this algae is not harmful at all. Actually, it's extra nutrients for your plants. It's just not pretty looking. And so um, during the season, if it's bothering you, you can clean your barrel mid-season. Typically, you can wait till the end of when you're about to winterize your barrel. So what you would do is you would unscrew the bung on the top of the barrel. So uh, across from the four inch opening should be a white uh, bung is what it's called. And you need some kind of tool with an edge to just get that started and then you should be able to just screw it off by hand. So in that opening, you'll insert your hose. And if you have a pressure wand for your hose, that'll help a lot because then you can just kind of blast around the insides of, of the barrel and knock that algae off and then tip your barrel and, and uh, allow that all to flow out. If you have um, quite a buildup and you don't have enough pressure, you can always go to a car wash and use their high pressure wand on the rinse uh, cycle. And that way you blast the, the algae right out of your barrel. Now, I have um, had experience where people have had a really tough time and you can put some vinegar in your barrel and just kind of leave it for you know several minutes and just kind of roll it so that it gets on it on its side so that it will loosen that algae but i wouldn't suggest using i've had the question should we put bleach in it no the point is we're trying to avoid the the chlorine so vinegar will will do the trick we'll loosen all that algae and then you'll just rinse it and rinse it and it'll be ready to to set up or to winterize awesome perfect thank you for that and we're coming to our last question now, and this one is for you, Lex. Um, so what can Calgarians use the collected water for? Is it something that we can drink? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm clueless. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the water is best used for lawns and flowers. Um, you can't drink it, but your plants can. And they, they'll appreciate it for exactly the reasons that Jen stated at the beginning. Uh, it's the right temperature. Um, tap water is very cold um, and it also has no chlorine in it. So they're really going to appreciate it. But yeah, it's it's for your plants, not for you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for making that clear. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Lex and Jen, for taking the time to join me today to talk about this. I think that our viewers will find this video very helpful going forward. So to our viewers, that is all that we have for you this week. So stay tuned for next week when I will be discussing some other ways that you can be sustainable in your yard and at home. Have a great weekend, everyone, and enjoy the sunshine while it's here.